Greetings and welcome to this New Year's Eve Taze service of prayer and healing. My name is Brandon Baxter and it is my privilege and joy to welcome you this evening to this time of prayer and singing and contemplation and healing. Now you'll notice that I am not at the church where we would normally be doing our Taze service. Instead, I am at home, and in fact, all of the members of our Taze team are in their homes this evening. We decided it was best not to gather because of the rise in coronavirus cases in our community. So instead, what we have done is we have created an online experience for you that draws on many of the songs and music that we have used in previous services, also prayers and meditations from those services. And we've also included uh, new scripture and prayers that are particular for this New Year's Eve. We hope you enjoy this time of prayer and of singing and of contemplation. Our Taze services are based on the style of worship from the Taze community in France. The Taze community is a monastic community and intentional living community that was founded in the aftermath of World War II. And it is an ecumenical community, which means it's open to people of all sorts of faith backgrounds and people from all over the world go on pilgrimage to find a place of prayer and connection with the divine at the Taze community. The style of worship at Taze includes lots of singing. That singing that repeats is quite meditative and creates energy for the prayer time. And there's also time of silence. And so you'll find both of those will happen this evening. At our New Year's Eve prayer services, we usually gather around our prayer labyrinth, which is sort of like a maze, but a labyrinth is different than a maze because in a labyrinth you can't get lost. There's only one way in and one way out. And labyrinths have been used for centuries as a tool for spiritual discipline. And the way that you typically walk a labyrinth is you enter at the beginning of the path, and as you work your way towards the path, it's a time of letting go, of letting go of whatever it is that burdens you and that you need to let go of. And then when you get to the center, you sit and spend as much time as you need at the center of the labyrinth, and that is a time to renew, to center, to get back in touch with the divine. And then on your way out, you walk that same path and you reflect upon that reunion, that illumination that has happened in the midst of the center, and you leave more connected to the divine than when you began. Now, of course, we won't be able to walk the labyrinth in this virtual space, but you are invited to use your finger to follow the path of a labyrinth. You'll find there's a labyrinth on the front of the bulletin for tonight's service. You can use that as a finger labyrinth. Also, on some of our platforms this evening, we will attach additional finger labyrinths that you can download and print. And you can trace those with your finger, either on your computer screen or after you've downloaded them and printed them. And you might want to keep these around afterwards, too, as a spiritual practice down the road. Also, when we get to our time of centering prayer, of our heart meditation, you will see on the screen that the labyrinth will actually show up on the screen if at that time you want to take your finger and start at the beginning of the path and trace it to the center and then trace, come back out, then you can use that during that time of prayer. 
And remember, as you trace inward, it's a time of letting go. As you, as you enter the center of that space, it's a time of illumination and reconnecting. And, and then on the way out is the time of that full reunion with the divine. So now I invite you to also find a candle, perhaps, to light in your midst to signify the presence of the divine. And you might also find some oil, some oil that you can use to anoint your head as a sign of healing and blessing. That sign of oil has been used in Christian practice throughout the centuries to seal God's blessing upon one another. You can maybe put a little bit of that oil on a cotton ball and simply, or use your finger and simply Make the sign of the cross on your own forehead. Or if you're worshiping with someone else tonight, maybe you can make the sign of the cross on them. So now we are going to enter a time of singing together. So I invite you to light your candle. I invite you to get your oil. I invite you to prepare to use the finger labyrinth. And I invite you to Reconnect with God this evening or any time that you might watch this later on. Peace be with you for this experience and this new year.
Blessings at Year's End by Howard Thurman. I remember with gratitude the fruits of the labors of others, which I have shared as a part of the normal experience of daily living. I remember the beautiful things I have seen, heard, and felt, some as a result of definite seeking on my part, and many that came unheralded into my path, warming my heart and rejoicing my spirit. I remember the moments of distress that proved to be groundless and those that taught me profoundly about the evilness of evil and the goodness of good. I remember the new people I have met from whom I have caught glimpses of the meaning of my own life and the true character of human dignity. I remember the dreams that haunted me during the year, keeping me ever mindful of goals and hopes which I did not realize but from which I drew inspiration to sustain my life and keep steady my purposes. I remember the awareness of the Spirit of God that sought me out in my aloneness and gave to me a sense of assurance that undercut my despair and confirmed my life with new courage and abiding hope. Ecclesiastes 3, 1 through 8 and 15. There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build. A time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones and a time to gather them, 
a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to search and a time to give up, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to mend, a time to be silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. Whatever is has already been, and what will be has been before, and God will call the past to account. We are going to enter into a longer period of silence and I usually lead us in a meditation that I was given while reading 
a book called The Heart of Centering Prayer by Cynthia Bourgeau. And it is a way of getting our bodies into this prayer, and it is a way of linking our minds and our hearts together. So if you will find a comfortable way of sitting, you may lie down on the floor if you're at home, anything that helps you be comfortable. And we'll start by bringing awareness to your feet and how they are making contact with the floor. And if you're sitting, you may notice how your sit bones are making contact with the chair cushion. If you're in lotus position on the floor, you may feel the sit bones directly on the floor. Then you may notice your breath. You don't have to fix it or make it anything. Your body mind knows how to breathe for you. But the words for breath and spirit are the same in Hebrew and Greek and other languages too. So when we are bringing our awareness to the breath, we are thinking and linking to the spirit, the Holy Spirit. And if during the long silence your mind wanders, which it will, be gentle with yourself. Simply notice the floor, notice your breath, and begin again. So to access the wisdom seat, we're going to think of that place right above your nose and between your eyebrows where some of our Hindu brothers and sisters wear a red circle to remind them that that is the seat of wisdom. We're going to follow that in our imagination back into the center of the head, right between your ears. And we are now right above the spine and the neck has seven Vertebra. So we're going to take this wisdom that we've accessed, this mind, and we're going to take seven steps into the heart space, one by one. So step one, step two, step three, step four, step five, Step six, step seven. Now we're at the entrance to the chest, which is where the physical heart lies. The electromagnetic field of the heart is much bigger. It extends two to three feet all around us. So it's with that space in mind that we bring the wisdom into the seat of compassion. This is where we meet God, our divine self and God's divine, divine love meet in a particularly intimate way. This is where we access all creation, including everyone we've ever known, living or dead, everyone we're going to meet, all of the cosmos, the tiniest ant, the smallest molecule. They are all within God and accessed in this heart space. So we bring the wisdom into the heart space so that we have wise compassion and compassionate wisdom. And so we enter into a long period of silence allowing the Spirit of God to speak to us.
When Jesus was present on the earth, his disciples saw him to be a man of deep prayer. And they said, Lord, will you teach us to pray? And he taught them saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and give us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We come now to that portion of the service where we are intentional about healing prayer. And this is where if you have gotten a cotton ball or a tissue with some oil on it or maybe a little uh, cup or dish, uh, you might want to get that. We're in the tradition, time-honored tradition, listed in the Epistle of James. It says, if any of you are sick, they should come and the elders will pray and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. So normally we have people come to the rail and someone prays with them and anoints them, but we'll have to do this a little bit differently. So if you are with someone, the easiest way to do it is to use your thumb and to touch it on the oil, and they make a vertical line on their forehead. That's in the name of the Father. And then you touch it again in, in the name of the Son. And then one more time, I touch right in the center where the two cross and the Holy Spirit. You can use Creator, Redeemer, Sustainer. You can use some other Trinitarian formula if you'd like. If you're doing it for yourself, if you're doing it for yourself, it's easier with the index finger and because you have to uh, find your uh, forehead. So we will be singing healing music just because today is healing. And remember that healing is something that brings peace and it doesn't necessarily mean curing but it always means peace. So let us sing and pray together.
We pray that you have indeed encountered the divine in this time of prayer and healing. We ask many blessings upon you for the new year. And we leave you with the words of the traditional Celtic prayer. May the road rise up to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face. The rains fall soft upon your fields until we meet again. May God hold you in the palm of God's hand. May it be so.